So this is fun. I was just about to do a video with that 1966 Ford Galaxy 500. I was driving it up in these hills over here and it decided to die on the way up. I was able to coast it right here after it lost power and died. I let it sit for a while just in case maybe I flooded it, but I don't think that's the problem either. I checked the spark plugs. I think they're fine. I think it might be a fuel issue actually. And there's no cell service here. So now I have to walk all the way down that hill, way over there, so I can see if I can find somebody with a phone. Old school, right? I mean, when was the last time you didn't have cell service somewhere and you actually had to find an actual landline? Gonna leave the Galaxy 500 here and hike down this hill. All right, good news. I was able to find a little small patch of cell service here in these hills. I was able to call AAA and they're gonna be on their way to hopefully get me out of this little quandary. So yeah, I'm here stuck on the side of the road waiting for a tow. I figured I'd take advantage of my time here with this vehicle and we can talk about it a little bit. Right behind me I have a 1966 Ford Galaxy 500 convertible, one of just over 27,000 made that year. It was the third best-selling convertible that year behind the Impala and the Mustang. This is a fantastic looking vehicle that I just don't see very often. I actually rented this beautiful 1960s Ford product for a commercial video project that I'm working on. And then it proceeded to die right here on the edge of this beautiful hill. Now, I'm not incredibly well versed in the vehicles from the 60s. I did own a 1966 Buick Special for several years, but my heart's really with the cars from the 80s and 90s. But that's not to say I don't absolutely love the styling of this era, I do. Ford had six full-size vehicles for the 1966 model year. This right here is the Galaxy 500, which pretty much slotted right in the middle of that lineup. The Galaxy's stacked headlights were first introduced in the 1965 model year, but I think they look even better here. If you're an early NASCAR fan, you might remember Galaxies dominating many stock car races in the early 60s. This body style, with an actual roof of course, could be seen at stock car races in that era, which back then probably translated to sales. I would have totally bought one of these things if I saw the stock car version tearing up Daytona back in the day. Under the hood is Ford's 390 cubic inch V8, which is 6.4 liters. This was the standard engine in many Ford cars and trucks. It's not as powerful as the iconic 427 and 428 motors, but the 390 in this application provides a good amount of get up and go. Let's check out the interior. I figure while I'm in here, I'll see if I can just get it to start one more time. I don't know, who knows? Oh well, let's just keep talking about this car. Can't drive it, we might as well just sit here and talk about it. I got nothing else to do, waiting for the tow truck. So the first thing you'll notice is the gigantic steering wheel. It's perfect for cruising, it's really great size, it's really super thin, which I really like for uh, this type of vehicle. And the horn is this whole piece right here. It doesn't actually work in this car, but that's where the horn would be. Very long horizontal gauges. And on the dashboard, you got your lights, your wipers are right here. It has a nice little clock in the middle there. So I think this dash pad right here was probably reconditioned at some point. Maybe maybe it's sagging a little bit, it's pretty low. This is my view, because I'm kind of tall. I can't actually see the speedometer, so I have to like kind of crouch down like this to see how fast I'm going. And then on the doors, you've got cranks for the window, and then this little corner window here. These seats have a nice pattern right down the middle right here. And the same in the back seat. Of course, you've got your obligatory ashtrays in the back. You need ashtrays, everybody smoked back then. As you can see, we've reached the golden hour here. Sun's just going behind this hill right back there. And it's kind of got me a little concerned that the tow truck driver's not here yet. So I'm gonna head down the hill and see if I can get myself some cell service again, figure out where the heck they are. So I just got through to AAA. It sounds like maybe the tow truck will be here in 10 minutes, hopefully, crossing my fingers before it gets dark and cold and the bears come out.
the crickets and the spooky sounds are officially out. Still stuck here with this vehicle. Triple A said they'd be here maybe 40, 50 minutes ago. Still haven't seen them. Just gonna see if I can find my little spot of cell reception that I've got here and try calling them again. Ha! <laughs> it actually started. I guess I better get out of here before anything else bad happens up here. Well, now that the car is running, I'll get this thing home and maybe I'll shoot a little bit more with this vehicle tomorrow. How's it going? So yeah, as you can see, car made it home just fine. The problem yesterday was I believe a thing called vapor lock where the fuel vaporizes in the fuel system and it can't quite make it to the carburetor and the car stalls and it can't get started again. Anyway, so after that little unexpected adventure yesterday, car's back home. So I work for a company called Strymon. They make effects pedals for musicians. And we actually rented this vehicle for a video for one of our new products. That video shoot starts in a couple hours, so I think I have just enough time to drive around and then head on off to that video shoot. So let's go. Lap belt. One of the things that I really like about this Galaxy is that it demands attention pretty much everywhere you go. That's good and bad depending on where you're driving, but I've seen a lot of people just look over and smile when they see this car. It's hard not to. I mean, look around. Most new cars are just kind of like beige or gray blobby SUVs and sedans. This car stands out, and it's not just because of this bright red paint. It's because it brings people back to the time when cars were more than just an appliance. It's about style, it's about the design, it's about all the little details, and of course it's about looking good, it's about being noticed. It draws attention whether you like it or not. Don't drive this car if you don't want people to come up and talk to you. Let's talk about the steering. Yep, you can drive this with your pinky, no problem. This is a cruising car. In fact, I'm really excited to be driving this to downtown Los Angeles tonight to do our video shoot because this is the perfect car to be cruising around at night in Los Angeles. That and maybe a DeLorean, but this is pretty good. Going over some railroad tracks right there. It's a good time to talk about the ride. As you would expect, the ride's super smooth and super floaty and uh, really just incredibly comfortable, perfect for cruising. When I was driving this on those back roads yesterday, I could get the tires to squeal at like 35 miles an hour. This is probably the slowest vehicle I've taken up that road. Slow in terms of being able to get around the corners. Obviously you can go in a straight line relatively quickly, but around turns, around a windy back road, this car is completely out of its element. So I have no idea why I took it up there yesterday. I just thought it'd be kind of fun, kind of silly, but it turns out maybe not a great idea because it broke down. So let's talk about one other thing that I always think about when I'm driving an old vehicle, especially one with lap belts and no roof. You know, if you get in an accident, this seat's just gonna swing me right forward into the steering wheel. I can't remember when they came out with a collapsible steering wheel. This one may not have it, so I could just get completely impaled by the steering wheel in this vehicle. It's just one of those things that you just have to kind of either ignore or just keep in mind when you're driving an old car. Obviously, everybody used to drive old cars like this back in the day, but now that cars have thousands of airbags and all these safety features and cameras and everything, this car is kind of like riding a bicycle in the middle of a, the Indy 500. So I, I tend to drive old cars, especially cars from the 50s and 60s, I tend to drive them like, like you're riding a bicycle or like you're riding a motorcycle because I don't have any of the safety features that everybody else takes for granted now. This car, by today's standards, incredibly unsafe, but that doesn't mean that I don't still want to drive it like a lot. This car is awesome. So as I mentioned, I rented this car today for a commercial video shoot. So I'm gonna head over there right now and shoot a little behind the scenes of what we're working on. It 
just died again. I was just turning down this street and uh, lost all power, was able to coast off to the side. Let's see if it'll start again. Should I try to make it home, I guess? Cross your fingers. So to check out the complete video that we just shot, click the link above. I'm a musician and I'm really into cars, so this was kind of a neat like confluence of, of things that I care about. So that was pretty cool. If you're a musician, if you use effects pedals, it might be something you'd be interested in. Having this car for three days was just a fantastic experience. It's been a long time since I got to drive a car from the 60s, especially something as beautiful and as wonderful to drive as this one. Yes, we did have a little issue with that vapor lock problem that I had yesterday, but I've owned enough cars. I kind of just expect breakdowns to happen, so I just kind of roll with the punches. Not a big deal. So yeah, it was a blast driving this car, and I kind of don't want to give it back. Kind of, kind of want to keep it. Perfect Los Angeles nighttime cruiser. I love it. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.